Luke here with the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel and as you guys know we love to go camping and when we camp we like to eat well. So I'm going to share with you a bunch of my favorite camping recipes. Some of these are pretty fancy, some of them are pretty simple, all of them are delicious. So without further ado, let me show you my favorite camping recipes. Look at that sloppy, cheesy steak sandwich right there. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh. Look at that, so good. There we go, eggs benedict. Mm. Eggs benedict is a decadent camping breakfast item. But if you really think about it, it's all ingredients and equipment that you probably bring anyways. So for a little extra effort, you can go from scrambled eggs and bacon to this. Mm. Oh, it's good. I've got some olive oil, I've got some bread flour, I've got salt and pepper, a little bit of honey, some butter. I'm gonna add some oil, I'm gonna add a, a pinch of salt, I'm gonna add some butter into the, the dough. We're gonna make a very basic flatbread and cook it on this rock over here. And you don't wanna add too much water you want it so that the dough doesn't stick to your hands because if it sticks to your hands, it'll stick to the rock. Get that butter melting on here. I'm gonna put some honey. Piece. Yeah, here, try it, it's really hot. Mm, that's good. Mm. The honey makes, makes it oh. really 
little trick for melting snow. You got to put a little water in the bottom of the pan or you'll melt your pot. There, it doesn't take much. But... The brownies are almost done, so we're gonna get some ice cream to go with our brownies. Just take some of the fluffy new snow here. Just a little dab of vanilla. And sweetened condensed milk. And it should be cold. You don't wanna melt your snow. If it's really cold and dry snow, it works a little better. This is kind of wet stuff. There we go, vanilla ice cream. Try that. That tastes good. Tastes like real ice cream. There we go, steamed brownie. When you steam a brownie, it comes out just like it was baked, only it's more moist. It's really nice. You know what this brownie needs? Some ice cream. <laughs> Oh, you don't want any of this, Nathan. It doesn't taste very good. Well, I prepared three different types of kebabs for dinner today. I've got bacon wrapped chicken. I've got chicken mixed with peppers and squash and mushrooms and onions. And I've got pineapple and chicken chunks mixed together. You can prepare these things in advance and they're so easy and quick to cook up. Great campfire food. Check this out. All right, got the shish kebabs in these bags here. We're gonna add some barbecue sauce to the bags. Let that get all coated all over. Oh yeah. 
Ooh, that's looking good. Ooh. Look how yummy that is. Nah. Oh. oh, that's good. <laughs> Got my tin can cooking pot, make sure it's bone dry, and we're gonna add peanut oil to it. So we're just gonna use these little dinner biscuits that come in the can. It doesn't really matter which brand. Take them with your grubby, dirty camping hands. Make a little ring out of it. All right, let's test the oil and see where we're at. There we go. That is a beautiful donut. While it's still hot and a little oily, dump it into a bag of powdered sugar. That is a very delicious campfire donut right there. You want to use my stick? Mm. When these things are hot, they just taste absolutely delicious, just like a homemade donut. But once they cool down, they kind of taste like a biscuit. So this is a food enjoyed fresh and hot. So what I have here is corn dog batter. It's really simple to make. This is actually the recipe based off of the famous corn dogs at Disneyland. It's basically one part cornmeal, one part flour, a couple teaspoons of baking soda, honey, and sugar, and a touch of salt. It's kind of a sweet batter. I'll stick a hot dog on a stick. They are sorry of making this. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Is that not a gorgeous corn dog? All right, we'll just let it sit there and cool for a little bit. Is that my hot dog? Here, just give it a bite right there on the corner with it. Mm -hmm. I kind of like it. Yeah, you kind of like that? Just put some uh, water on my hands and take the popcorn, mush it into a ball, and there we go. Popcorn balls, who wants one? I do. There you go. I Mama, do. you want one? Mm -hmm. It's basically just Rice Krispie treats with popcorn instead of Rice Krispies. Mm. We got this little jar with butter, rosemary, and a little bit of garlic, and we're gonna put this by the fire and let it get all melty and warm. We're grilling king crab legs over an open fire. Look at these bees. <laughs> Look at this. This is just one claw. Frozen king crab legs are sold pre-cooked. So all you got to do is basically just heat them up and enjoy them. Oh man, they smell so good. I can see the juice is dripping out of that one. Look at that. Oh, this one little joint has more meat in it than an entire blue crab. Look at the size of the chunk of meat that came out of there. Holy mackerel. This one's going to get messy, folks. Real messy. All right, got a little butter on that. Whoa. Oh, that's so good. This is a cinnamon raisin brioche loaf. It's kind of like a cinnamon roll without the frosting. The eggs are kind of frozen. That's ice in the eggs. <laughs> they are so frozen. It's like an egg slushy. Is it? That's why I That swim. It's so good. Here, guys. You want some French toast? Yeah. 
better. You guys like that? Is that good? No, that's enough. All right, guys, we are going to make bulgogi pork fajitas. Bulgogi sauce is a sweet marinade used on pork meat in Korea, and it is wonderful. You can find this in most Korean and Asian supermarkets, and you can even find it online through places like Amazon.com. Now, bulgogi goes with pork, and kalbi marinade goes with beef. Both can be used. They both work really good in this recipe. And as with a lot of these campfire recipes, you can save yourself a lot of time and stress by doing your chopping and dicing at home. Now, in a lot of places, you can buy the meat already cut up and marinated. But in this situation, we've got some beautiful pork loin that we're going to cut up and marinate ourselves. All right, everything we need for bulgogi fajitas. Let's go camping. It's already gross. Little bulgogi sauce on everything. That's gonna be the. I've got an idea. There we go, Korean bulgogi pork fajitas. Oh, that's good. They're kind of sweet instead of spicy. Mm. Like that? Mm -hmm. Really, really good. Best Korean fajitas you've ever had? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that! We've got crabs! That, that one's by Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh, what is that? That is. Yeah, oh, that's a mussel. And that's a big one, too. Yeah, you can eat these. I know. Really for eating is what, what yours is. Yeah. All right, got Olve. Oh my, that is looking good right there. Oh yeah, that is all good. Oh, there's a big piece of crab right there. Look at that. Like that? Delicious. Now for marinating the chicken, you can make your own marinade from scratch. And I did a video on how to do that. I'll put a link in the description or you can just buy pre-made Peruvian rotisserie chicken marinade. Now what I'm doing here is I'm spat cocking the chicken. I'm taking the spine out. Okay. And then you just cut on either side of the breastbone right there. The bird will now lay flat. Look at that. If you ever want to cook a whole chicken on a grill or over a campfire, spat cocking it so it lays flat will make it cook much more evenly, thoroughly, and quickly. We're gonna take the skin and pull it up a little bit. Dip your fingers in the marinade. What? Chop it up and cook it in quarters. Teeny tiny. They are like death. We're all ready for our camp out. <laughs> oh, 
There we go, we got some green sauce on the side. It smells amazing. There we go. Oh, ho, ho. On the shrimp. Ah, there we go. Pretty white catfish fillets. Blackened redfish magic here. And get this pan hot. Once the butter turns brown, lay those fillets in there. To take this leftover rice from last night and let that soak up all the butter and seasonings and grease. Blackened catfish and rice. There you go. Crispy blackened catfish with fried rice. Go heavy. Now let's go get a frying pan really hot. Time to fry. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hold it. You got it? You got it? Yeah, hold it strong. It. All right. Yeah, he was... Black and catfish with pico de gallo and avocado. What do you think of the catfish, Nathan? I like it. Yeah, we got it. Especially with some green chili salsa. Cutting up the vegetables is 90% of the work. Once we get out there and start camping, it'll be so easy to make a delicious Japanese curry that'll feed a ton of people. Start off with the stuff that takes the longest to cook, like potatoes, and then you just work your way up. So, go you know, potatoes, carrots, onions, beans, uh, you know, mushrooms, that sort of thing. So you can use any meat you want in curry, but I think chopped up kielbasa is the absolute best for Japanese curry. Just greasy and flavorful. All right, now we got all the veggies cooked, we add the curry. There we go. Oh, I should probably read the instructions before I burn that. All right, let that sit. All right, it is dinner time. Let's get some curry going. All right, anybody want? So I <laughs> about my bike. <laughs> you like that? Oh, you got him, buddy? You got him? Keep that rod up. Keep the rod up in the air. Oh! Right up. Pull him right up. Fresh Alaskan salmon is one of those fish that's hard to screw up. Hands down, my favorite recipe is melted butter and brown sugar smothered all over a filet and grilled. Oh, it's so good. There you go, a slab of fresh grilled salmon and corn on the cob, man.
got some chunk of baguettes, meatballs, tater tots, canned button mushrooms. Uh, you can use all sorts of stuff in fondue. Now fondue may not seem like a great camping food, but that's what it was invented for. It is a traditional Swiss camping food. People would take a thing of old cheese, which keeps very well, and you can just throw in your backpack, and a bottle of wine, and they would go up, and they would melt up the cheese and dip all their leftover bread in it. Now the purpose of adding the white wine to the cheese is the acidity of the white wine breaks down the cheese and makes it smooth and velvety. I don't drink wine, so we're gonna use lemon juice instead to get that acidity, and we're gonna use chicken stock as our liquid. Like that, babe? It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, you like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You like that, Tom? Yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna make some seafood jambalaya here, and I've got this Cajun spicy jambalaya mix I picked up in Louisiana. Celery, peppers, onions. <laughs> Once the carrots start to get soft, then we add the honey. Woo! We want them bendy, not mushy. All right. I just pull these off the heat and let them sit. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more campfire cooking videos, check out our campfire cooking video playlist on the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.